Hello guys, welcome to my second video on uh, Layer 3 VPNs with segment routing. In this video, we are going to talk about um, deploying Layer 3 VPN services uh, using the segment routing enabled core network. If you remember the topology from my first video, we have a bunch of routers running segment routing. So Nexus 1 to Nexus 7, all of the nodes are segment routing enabled. And what we're planning to do is deploy Layer 3 VPN and see how the packet forwarding works within the core network. The, the concepts of Layer 3 VPNs do not change. Um, it's just that how you deploy it on Nexus OS is the key. And we are going, we are again using the Nexus 9000V image. With the newer releases, uh, we have now support for segment routing um, and Layer 3 VPNs as well. And for Layer 3 VPNs, you might have to, if you're deploying it on the real production boxes or real hardware, then you might want to check out um, the CCR documentation if the hardware really supports Layer 3 VPN or segment routing capabilities. So make a note of that and you should be good to go. So getting back to the lab, um, I believe uh, I have configured most of the devices. If you look at um, NX1, NX2, NX6 are already running Layer 3 VPN. And NX7 is what I'm going to do a new deployment or add a new Layer 3 VPN service, which will be connecting to um, the other sites. And NX4 is acting as the route reflector for VPN v4 address family. So let's jump right onto it. Okay, so let's first look at on Nexus 7, what all features have been enabled. We do show run pipe include feature. Um, and we can see we have feature, feature set MPLS, feature MPLS segment routing, feature MPLS OAM. So, Good, we, we are at the baseline configuration. The first step we do is enable, seg, uh, enable the feature for L3 VPN. So it's feature MPLS, feature MPLS L3 VPN. Uh, once you enable this feature, your MPLS L3 VPN functionality will be enabled. But more importantly, you also need to enable feature BGP. If you don't enable feature BGP, um, you won't be able to configure the route distinguisher under the VRF. So BGP is, is the baseline and LTVPN is the dependent for VPNV4 address family. VPNV4 or VPNV6, both the address families get enabled the moment you enable feature MPLS L3VPN. All right, so we are good to go here. So we have enabled the two features. Um, the first step we do is we configure the VRF, VRF context A, whatever the name you want to give, uh, define the route distinguisher. And in this case, we have route distinguisher one colon one. Well, this is the route distinguisher that I've configured on all the other B routers, NX1, NX2, and NX6. So I'm going to change this time. So I'll just configure it one colon seven. Uh, and then perform route target, well, address family IPv4 unicast, route target both one colon one. And this is the route target that we are uh, importing or exporting across all of the P, uh, P nodes in this uh, network, in this topology. All right, so we are done here, and we get onto the interface, interface Ethernet 1 slash 2, which is the interface connecting uh, the C router C7. If you remember the topology, uh, it's here. Um, this is the one. So this is, uh, by the way, I'm not sure if you guys noticed, we are using uh, GNS3 version 2.2. It's it's pretty cool, and now we have a web uh, web UI for looking at the topologies and uh, doing stuff with it. Like you can actually stop the node from here. Uh, if you want to look at the interface labels, you can click on this icon here. You'll be getting the interface labels uh, if you want to take a look at it. But uh, I'm not a big fan of looking at the labels, so I'll just hide it for the time being. Um, all right, so we have Ethernet 1 slash 2 and Ethernet 0 slash 0 that we need to configure. So under Ethernet 1 slash 2, we enable VRF member. Uh, well, oh, well, 
it won't enable by default, so we need to do no switch port. And then we are a member A, and we configure the IP address, IP address 172.16.7.1 slash 24, no shed. And we'll go to CE7, so CE7, I just opened the console. Okay, do we have it here? Okay. And we get on the config mode. First, configure the loopback. So IP address 172.17.7.7. Slash 32 and Ethernet 0 slash 0. We have IP address Ethernet. Uh, let me take a look at the interface again. Uh, it's Ethernet 00. zero. Okay. All right. So IP address 172.16.7.2. Yeah, that's the right one. 255, 255.255.0. No shit. And just verify the link connectivity 172.16.7.2. We should be good here. Well, 7.1. And I'm hoping, yes, it's working. So we have the connectivity. Now let's configure um, BGP as the routing protocol. So we get on to Nexus 7 and say router BGP 100. Router ID 7777, address family, VPN B4 Unicast, we enable that. Not doing anything with that. Um, since R4 or NX4 is a route reflector, so we establish a pairing with the route reflector, so neighbor 4444, four, four, remote 100, address family, well, update source, loop by zero. Address family, VPN before Unicast, send community both. You can just do extend it as well. But if you're using some extra community standard community values, you want to send both of them, then sure you can do both. And um, that's it. That should take care of it. Um, so we are good here. And then we get on to the VRF configuration, so VRF A. And we define address family, IPv4. Unicast. Um, if you want to advertise the connected subnet or the link, you can do redistribute um, correct route map correct. Okay, and we can get into the push um, config mode. So what this push command does is it actually allows you to do an extra set of configuration, and when you are done with that piece of configuration, you can pop and get back to the same old state uh, where you were before. So like we did push here, so I'm going to say route map direct permit 10. And if you notice, we are now in the route map configuration mode, but the moment I do pop, I am back into the BRF address family configuration mode. So we are back to the same old state. So it's a pretty useful tool with Nexus OS. Um, uh, I, I use it quite a lot, so hope you guys find this useful. So we have uh, configured the redistribute thread. Now let's, let's establish the peering. Neighbor 172.16.7.2. Uh, just let me. And we say remote 65,003, maybe. And address family IPv4 Unicast. I think that should be that should take care of everything. All right, so we are done here. And let's go to CE7. Okay, we say router BGP 65,003. Um, if you want to set the router ID, BGP router ID, 172.17.7.7, no BGP default IPv4, and we say neighbor 172.16.7.1, remote 100, address family IPv4 unicast, neighbor 172.1716.7.1, activate. And the other thing is we advertise the loopback, so network 172.17.7.7 
mask 255, 255, or 255.255. So our BGB peering has come up. Uh, so 7.1 is up. Let's look at what are the BGP prefixes that we are receiving. Show BGP IPv4 unique asked. So we only have our own prefix. We have not received any other prefix. Why? Because right now NX7 only has the peering with CE7. It has no peering established with um, the router selector NX4. So we are not receiving any remote VPN v4 prefixes. So let's now establish the or complete the configuration on NX4. So we have show run BGP. Um, we have the router selector configuration. So we get on the config mode router BGP 100 neighbor 7777. And you can just copy paste the config, um, and we should be good to go. All right, and copy run start. Oh, we can save it later in case I want to make any changes. All right, so what do we have here now? Um, let's go back to our NX7. So show BGP VPN v4 unique as summary. Okay, we have now six prefixes being received. Let's now look at those prefixes. Show BGP, VPN v4 unicast. And we can see all the different prefixes. Note that, I mean, every other node I'm using the same route distinguisher, but now since I'm using the route distinguisher 1 colon 7 on this local NX7 for the CRFA, um, I could see the prefixes in this um, route distinguisher as well. So we have the prefixes. Um, let's now look at the route in the routing table. So show IP route VRF A, and we could see a bunch of routes, and we should be receiving those routes on C7 as well. So now if I do show BGP IPv4 unicast, we can see all the prefixes. So let's now say we are going to ping 172.172.2, so we can do one ping 172.172.2 source loopback zero. And bingo, we have the traffic flowing, being working just fine. And if I want to, oh well, um, trace route, trace one seven two one seven two two, and oh well. Here's another thing: if you run normal trace route, it's going to take a lot of time. Just use the numeric keyword saves you a lot of time and um, it's, it's pretty quick. So it, it doesn't perform a lookup uh, on the domain names and, and host names, kind of those things. It just performs a numeric, it returns the IP address to the next half and just gives you the data. So it's pretty useful. Um, all right, so if you notice here from, from C router, it went to the P and from there it went to node five, which, uh, but with the, the IGP label or the, um, this is the VPN label and this is the IGP label with IGP label 16002 because we are reaching out to 7721722. That is the, the loopback configured on the, the C router connecting NX2. So obviously we need to reach to NX2 and that has the prefix set of 16002. And when we reach to, we popped up the label and here we have the VPN label, and then we perform IP lookup to reach 172.16.22, and then 172.172.2, right? So let's now look at the, how, how the information looks like in, in the core. Okay, so first thing first, let's look at the, the VPN labels. We'll show BGP VPN v4 unicast labels. In this, you can see the VPN labels allocated. So if you look at the VPN label for 2.2, you will see 4.92.2.8.7. Well, everybody has the same. So since there's just one VRF and same number of prefixes, um, we, we have on, on Nexus OS right now, what the configuration we are doing is um, we are allocating labels on a per VRF basis and it's not on per prefix space. So all the VRFs that you're seeing is pretty much having the same label. If you have per prefix option, then obviously it will be on a per prefix basis and you will see different labels for different set of prefixes. But right now, 
even the same prefix for 172.162.0 and 172.172.2. Both of them residing on the same uh, P router, P node, and the same label. Okay, this is per VRF label allocation. So we have the VPN label. Let's look at the the MPLS switching table or the MPLS forwarding table uh, for the IGP labels. So we have so show MPLS switching, and in this output we can see the label for the P router 2.2.2.2. And note in this command, it also displays the VPN label and the and the VRF table for which it's allocated. So this one is for VRF default, and this one is for VRF A, and this is the VPN label. Okay, so I think uh, we are good here. And if you want to look at how the packet capture looks like, we can actually, um, so if I remember the traceback, or if you look at the traceback, it's from node five, we are going to node three. So if we go here, node five and node three. So let's look at the packet capture on node, between the link between node five and node three. Um, the packet, you cannot initiate the packet capture or this, uh, the Wireshark from uh, from this web, web UI, but you can actually do it using the GNS3 uh, window or Mac or Windows application itself. So right now we are only seeing the ISIS hellos, and if we go back to the, the terminal windows, and if we initiate the ping, Let's see the packets, uh, how they look here in the core. So we have the packets, and if I look at the packet from 77, uh, 172.17.7 to 172.17.2.2, I could see the IGP label, 16,002, and I could see the VPN label, right? And we have the, the IP header uh, beneath it, which is the packet coming in, the ICMP packet coming in from the host site or the, the customer site. And if you look at the packet capture uh, at any point on the node connecting the P router 2, that is between NX3 and NX2, uh, let me initiate the packet capture just to show you that we will not be seeing the IGP label, but we will be seeing uh, just the VPN label being forwarded because we have popped the pop the IGP label, and uh, that's what it is. So let's get back to the terminal. Let's initiate a ping with um, packet. Well, uh, what do we do? Repeat two. Okay, we'll just do packets. And right now, if you see here, we only have the VPN label 4922287. Four, four, right, so pretty cool. Uh, and now we can actually look at some other data. So if you look at how the VPN v4 prefixes look like, so we can do show BGP VPN v4 unicast, and the prefix 172.17.2.2 slash 32. All right, so if you look at the, the data that we are receiving, uh, we can see the route distinguisher, RD1 colon one, it's, is being received, the next hop is 2.2.2.2, it's being received from the route reflector. The received label, this is the VPN label, 4.92.2.8.7, and the extended community value, RT1 colon 1. That's what we are importing and exporting on all the 4P routers. And um, since we are using a different route distinguisher here locally on R7 or NX7, uh, we see the same information imported in the route distinguisher uh, using the route distinguisher one colon seven and same set of information. The the next hop, uh, the route reflector who is advertising the prefix and the received label and the extended community value. And who are we advertising it to? We are advertising it to one seven two one six seven one two. So I I hope you find this uh, video useful for deploying MPLS L3 VPN services over segment routing enabled core on Nexus 9000 switches.